guys so today we're making plant killer soap um, this one has rose kale and clay in the bottom uh, that's supposed to look like the clay pot underneath the um, leaves of the plant and I created this soap because I moved into a new house if any of you have watched the vlogs you kind of know that and I have been able to have plants for the first time and I'm kind of obsessed with having plants in my house but they die so easily um, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I seem to either water them too much or not enough and so I decided to make this soap for everyone that is having trouble keeping their plants alive. If you can't keep plants alive, you can at least have this soap. So um, this soap is a coconut, um, coconut milk soap, so it also has coconut oil, but coconut milk in, um, I'm mixing that in, you can see now, so I'm mixing that into the oils. I like to use dry coconut milk because it gives me more control over the liquid in my soap batter. So I'm just mixing that in, um, getting it all blended, and I have more control over how much fat goes into the soap batch because when the coconut milk is dry, it's all evenly distributed. Distributed? The fat's distributed. Anyway, <laughs> moving along, mixing it all up, we'll just add the lye in there. We're getting it a little bit emulsified. And I try not to overmix my soap, especially with this, because the scent is um, aloe, clover, and then there's a little bit of kind of a, um, it's like a dirt scent, so it has, it kind of smells like beets when you first dig a fresh beet out of the ground and you slice it, that sweet, it's a sweet scent, and then it just has that little, little tang of earth, it smells really good. So anyway, I'm just mixing this soap up right now, and... We will pretty soon put the color, put the um, green part, measure that out, and then add the rose kale and clay for the bottom. So now I am pouring off the green, which is going to be for the leaves. And I'm using a green oxide for the green color for the leaves. So pretty soon I'll just mix that up. But I think I'm going to put the rose kale and clay in the base part because it was getting a little thick at this point. So I like to put my clay powder in dry and then I add a little bit of water to it while it's in the soap batter. It seems to help it um, mix more thoroughly and evenly so I don't get clumps of clay and I don't have to use my stick blender when I do it this way. I just kind of mix the water in with the clay and it works really well. So that's what I always do. Especially if you have a scent that's getting a little bit thick, you don't want to use your stick blender and this prevents getting clumps in your batter. So now it's time to pour the bottom, the first color. So this is the part that will look like a clay pot. And I noticed that my soap batter was getting a little, it may look sort of runny and thin, but for me this was getting kind of thick and I didn't like it. <laughs> I was getting nervous at this point. And I source my rose kale and clay. I'll put the um, all of the places that I get my ingredients, or especially for this one, down in the description. But I get it from Majestic Mountain Sage. And I have got um, bought rose clay from different places, but I find that the Majestic Mountain Sage is really good. I also like the Brambleberry one too. They're their clay is a really good color. Um, some clays that I've bought the some of the clays that I've bought have been a little bit um, red, more red than pink, and I really like the pink color. So try to get them from the same place always. I 
once you find a supplier you really like it it's hard to when they discontinue something <laughs> so I usually order like I have five pounds of rose clay at the moment right now okay so now I'm gonna mix up the green oxide color and that will be the leaves So just stirring it to get all those lumps and to make sure it's evenly mixed. So there were a lot of lumps. It was starting to get lumpy and thick and hot, really hot. And the base part, the um, rose clay, was already solid at this point. So I was a little worried pipe because I was gonna decide, I decided to pipe the leaves on top and I was a little worried that they would not stick to the base because it was so hot and firm, but it actually worked, so we'll have to see. So I'm just smoothing out those lumps, trying to get them nice and smooth and mixed back in so it's all one texture, and it kind of worked. So now I got, have my piping bag and I put some um, green oxide down the edges because I was trying to do like a color, different color difference, um, trying to make it like highlight. I don't know what I was doing, it didn't work. <laughs> mm. And also I'm not very good at piping, so. <laughs> So this is my sad attempt at piping, <laughs> and I did not know what I was doing. So now I decided that I would just pour the bottom part in and then pipe on top of it because it was getting really solid and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get it into my piping bag anyway, so I just decided to go with this and it actually worked pretty well. And we're going to speed this up because it's boring. Okay, now I'm going to pipe on top of that layer. So, let's see if I can do this a little bit better. <laughs> I really can't, but let's be optimistic. And this is how slowly I was piping. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I'm so slow at this. I was trying to pull up and make it look like a leaf and it was not cooperating with me So let's get this done a little bit faster and I'll show you what I actually ended up doing after the piping. I mean the piping worked okay but it wasn't, the, it wasn't great. Let's be honest, <laughs> it was not great. So this is how you can fix this kind of piping if you want to make leaves. So I used a spoon and it was at the thickness where it made really nice leafy textures. I did about a thousand little spoon marks.
Okay, so now it's time to put the drizzle. So I decided to put a little teeny bit of green mica on the very top of my leaves. And these leaves are supposed to kind of look like a fern. I have this plant, it's a um, parlor palm and it's constantly dying on me. It's either too dry or too wet. I don't know what the problem is, but Anyway, this is the inspiration for the soap, is my dying plants. And here I'm spraying it with alcohol just to make sure that kind of green gets all blended in there. And here's a close-up. And I think it turned out pretty nice, considering that I could not pipe. <laughs> Looks like leaves. But now let's see the cut pictures, right? Here they come. Alright, it's time to cut it. So here is the soap. It's all out of the mold. I took it out. Um, you can see the bottom part turned out really nice color. Um, rose clay, that rose kaolin clay turned out really nice. And now we're going to cut it and see what this soap looks like. So here's the cut. And this is my bud cutter. It's from um, Bud Hafner, I think. It's on Etsy. It's where everyone gets their cutter. And I cut my soap at one and a half inches thick, so it's a nice thick bar. And I'm smoothing the edges. I don't like that little rough edge that's around the, the soap, so I always smooth that off. And there's the first cut. All right, so here's the next one. We're gonna speed this up because they kind of all look the same. <laughs> and there we go. And if anyone is wondering, I get my molds from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and I don't get any sponsorship for any of these people from any of these people, but that's where I get my molds. And I get my um, my stamp that I'm going to be using. I got that from Laser Cut, and it's really nice. I would probably go with one of the metal ones that they have instead of this. Um, I don't remember what it is, but it's like a plastic because the handle broke off right away. But there's the cut bar with the stamp. And I think it's pretty cute. So I will have these in my Etsy shop pretty quick, pretty quickly, and you can get a bar for yourself. It smells really good. I'm definitely stealing one for my shower. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye! And don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like!